Raul is going to uh, talk about hacks, yeah. which I've heard about. I've not seen anything really done with it, but I've heard a, a, a bit about it. It's a cross-platform tool for developing for all kinds of different mobile platforms, and I'll let him take it away. So I was hoping to run this in the background while it's going. I'll do this at the end. So it is hacks. Uh, I would say it was hacksy, but it's or hacks. It's, it's one French guy who started it. They originally were working on Flash stuff. They did their own uh, compiler, and they grew into this. So this is a picture of. I'll show you later the game I was doing just so that I could teach myself this system, um, and. I was hoping that by writing it once, it would get ported to everything magically, um, which sort of works. So just as an aside, my day job is for a company called Best Stuff Research. Uh, this was in my spare time there, so they basically paid for it, so I should at least say thank you to them. Um, and they aren't really into this, because they're not really into games. They were just letting me do it, so. Uh, and, and I'm hard on things, so they're probably nicer than I am, so I'm gonna say some stuff. It's my fault that I'm complaining about it, not their fault. Don't get mad at them. All right, so Hex itself is very AS3-like. If you're used to ActionScript, you're kind of used to this. Since it first started, it's kind of gotten a little bit more stuff, so it's also a little bit Java-ish. Um, but if you think of AS3, one thing that is implied is that it requires a garbage collector. And so if you're porting to, for example, these devices, uh, that device can either be native stuff or you use Java, which doesn't have a garbage collector garbage collector. The native stuff won't. That one doesn't, right? So implied in this is when it ports to things, there's some underlying toolkit stuff that needs to happen by whoever does the back end. Um, when you look at the code, it has more, it, it allows you to be more uh, explicit about the types than action script. AS3 starts to do that too. Um, this goes even further. So the portability of the language that, it's worth pointing out that the, for example, the graphics, the input, the sound, that's a toolkit called NME, which is an echo media engine. That's separate from the language. It's built in the language ecosystem, but it's not going to yourself. So this is just the language itself has multiple backends. Uh, it started off as Flash, has JavaScript, HTML5, C++, PHP. Um, and the Java is an alpha. I haven't gotten that way to work yet, but it's fine. So it's, it is free open source. That's good and that's bad. Um, you probably all know the good things and bad things about free open source. I can go into that on the side if you want to rant. So now the, the toolkit that actually did game uh, with the language basically looks like Flash API. Not necessarily because that's the best API in the world, I guess, but just because people know it, it's documented, you can port stuff easily. A lot of these people work from the Flash background. Um, yes, there have been games really, really, really shipped that cross-platform. You can play the same game in a web browser as you can on your Android phone. I'm not one of those people yet, but other people have done that. Um, so it itself is also cross-platform even more than the language because it has to support, you know, sound, input, graphics, etc., on the different part. So it promises to do many different mobile systems, uh, even like whatever the Palm one that is dead is fully supports that too, um, and certainly desktop. It similarly is free open source. There's also, if you ask me what the licenses are in here, it gets complicated. There's multiple licensing too, so it's iffy. But um, the good and bad thing about it is, yes, you can get it. The internals, no, there's nobody being paid to work on it, so that's okay. All right, so what I was doing for my own phone uh, was to do this missile defense game, this command, don't say that it gets you from. I uh, wanted it to be relatively simple. I wanted to just draw everything myself, which means it's overkill to use this flash API and just draw graphics myself. I'm not sure. Since the devices I had around and never had good games on were old devices because I'm poor, I kind of wanted it to support old devices because I think that would be nice. Plus, it kind of sucks if you're going to the store and you try something and it just doesn't work very well. So I was, I was aiming for very low level, I guess. Um, now, what I've run it on, I told you what they claim it all runs on before. What I've really run it on is that Droid 2, a uh, guy at work has a brand new Samsung Galaxy, is it S3, whatever, it's you know beautiful and exciting, works on that. Done on the iPad 1, done on the iPad 3, uh, and then on this machine, no, not that machine, which is the same thing as this machine, um, Mac OS. Now, it should also do Windows, it should do Linux. I haven't done on those. I have those machines, but I haven't gotten around to it. Right. Um, all right, so that was the blah, blah, blah about the system that you would get from anybody. In my experience, which is relatively brief and curmudgeonly, 
Uh, yeah, it really is cross-platform. It works. It really is running on those two devices. It really does work on a desktop. It really is free open source in the best and worst sense of that. Uh, now, I think it really does have issues, uh, and I won't super go into them, but just to verbally barf them out. There's, there's this one system that they have is a VM of their own called Netco, which is very useful for testing stuff, but it's run on OCaml, which the compiler or X is built on. OCaml has 31-bit ints, not 32-bit ints. So you can't have 32-bit, which means you can't even do color in an int, so anyway, it's fun. Uh, default values depend on what platform you're on. Some platforms, uh, for example, some old versions of Flash pre-Flash 9, I think, if you had a variable, it could be null no matter what it is, whereas newer ones, you have primitives, and so those don't get to be null and that confusion is not very well abstracted. It's just exposed. You have to know about that. So it might work on one machine, move to the machine, and get an old pointer because you didn't have that. So there's kind of too many layers. It's hard to know where things happen or how to fix things sometimes. Um, threading is not really, uh, doesn't exist per se as a cross platform idea there. There's, there's basic stuff that drives me nuts. Um, you can define variable foo, blah, blah, blah code, variable foo, blah, 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 and it doesn't care. It says, oh, okay, sure, you can just totally overwrite that, and I won't complain. And so you have this weird bug where you thought foo was this thing, but then it got over and right. So it, it's, but that's a feature according to people who make it. So there's even just language decisions that, that seem frustrating. Um, so performance-wise, it's okay. Uh, build times, depending on the system, can be good and bad. For Android, it's painful. For iOS, it's not as bad. For Neko, it's very fast because it's just Spit or flash, spinning out some bytecode, running the VM, so you wait for the VM to start up. Um, it's kind of nice to test that way. The graphic speeds on these things is more about NME, the, the media engine. Um, it's not really designed for vectors, it turns out. Uh, to say. Uh, it's better for bitmap stuff, and that's what most of the games that have shipped use, is very sprite oriented. Uh, the, the ecosystem as a whole, I found documentation is painful and then you bring it up, half the people say, yeah, it's horrible, we should do something. Half the people say, oh no, it works fine. Uh, for my purposes. Debugging, profiling, all that kind of stuff. The tools are frustrating. If you're on Windows with Flash, you're kind of okay, it all just sort of works. If you're on anything else, good luck, Charlie. Uh, what I ended up, the most successful thing I've had is Mac, iPad, Xcode, Instruments, and then I can see what's going on. That, that fun thing. Um, there's regressions just across the ecosystem, so you just, there's always, every day there's some post on the list of, well, I upgraded this thing, and that doesn't work, but I have that thing, and, what, what, and then the response is, well, just update to the latest from SVN. Well, do I do that for all the libraries? It's kind of scary. So I, I tend to just stay behind, live with the bugs, work around them, don't upgrade. Um, the libraries, the core libraries are pretty sad, especially compared to Java. It does make you appreciate how well, how good a job the Java components did, giving you all that. Networking is kind of there, but not really just on very well as far as I can tell. Um, language spec is kind of lacking. Uh, so for example, they never tell you how equals is implemented, so you don't know is it like pointer equals, or is it looking inside of the structure comparison. You have to kind of ask that on the mailing list to find out. Um, there's no integration with native UI at the moment. That will come eventually. They're working on, for example, the Java port, so that should integrate better with Android. But that's just going to be Android, nothing else. Um, they have an installer. You think the installer's great. You install everything. And then you hit some bug, and they're like, well, don't use the installer. You should use what's in SVN. You should use Tip Tree. And then you're in hell. Uh, IDEs, if you're not on Windows, you're screwed. And then the whole installer thing versus SVN thing, you're in dependency hell of trying to figure out what it does and doesn't work. So you're chasing the tail. Um, there's just outright uh, bugs to uh, one egregious thing is all this is supposed to support uh, HTML5 and using the canvas element and it sort of does but there's horrible drawing bugs where it, side by side they just look very different and you open a bug on it and it gets marked as low priority because they don't care about your game I guess so it's sad and it, you know there's one guy working on the Gish thing which is for HTML5 it's not as fault it is a whole lot of time but that, the reality of it is Frustrating when compared to the website advertising. Oh, it just works on everything. Right, it doesn't. So. All right, so to try to sum it up, I'm probably over five minutes. I don't know. Conclusions: You've got to love building from source. Otherwise, you're just going to be stuck in the old stuff with bugs and frustrated, and people won't support you. And 
but at the same time, I try not to do that, so it's hard, it's hard to work. Uh, so leaky abstractions, you know, it's, there's this nice cross-platform thing, but uh, all of a sudden, let's, well, I had some, I'm trying to leave a specific example, but I think sound was one specific example. I only just did that experiment with it recently. I'm trying to get that to be cross-platform. It depends on what the system supports, right? So you can have WAV files, MP3 files, AUG files, AIFO files, whatever. And there's no real documentation to help to say well, which one is a cross-platform format. And so really you end up testing the matrix of n by n of stuff, right? It turns out WAV files work. Okay. Um, the documentation is lame, so you're going to end up asking a lot of people <coughs> over and over again stuff. You're going to you know, use Google to see if somebody else did it before, like two years ago, what was the answer, and has it changed since then, blah, blah, blah. So you're digging through history for all that. So I'll show you this thing, which after doing some profiling, I kind of got to work on lower machines. But generally speaking, this kind of stuff is not really recommended. So, so enemy is like this enemy engine is supposed to do all these wonderful things. But really, the Venn diagram, like there's this map of, oh, here's all the cool stuff we advertise it doing. But the thing it can really do when you look at the real coverage of that is this pretty narrow thing of bitmap game sprite stuff. Um, so having said all that, I didn't do any of this, right? Like, I mean, actually, I got this for free. I spent a couple of weeks messing with it, and I got a game out of it. So in a way, I should shut up and not complain and say this is really great, because it does work. And fundamentally, cross-platform is hard. Like, today, there were issues on the main list about how Xcode 4.3 installs to a different place than Xcode 4.4, and then the install scripts don't know that yet, and which one do you want, and if we have to install scripts, now you have to support both. So, so trying to put myself in their shoes, it's really hard. It's not an easy thing, and perhaps, that gives them more leeway, or perhaps that means you should just go for something that has a company behind it because then they have money to kill. I like open source, I like free stuff, I like getting my fingers in there if I have to. Um, so, and I'm broke and cheap, so that's what I've done. So that's basically it. I would like to show it on here, if I can. Can I switch to this um, one? We're, we're kind of past the five minutes. Okay. Is it cool if you do yes. personal demos with everyone after? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think people might like to enjoy getting their, their actual hands on and see how much fun it is. Um, I'm actually impressed that you were able to get a game done in a, in a few weeks based on all the things you just said you went through, but you just described my life as a developer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Googling a lot, you know, going to forums, getting frustrated, filing a bug, having marked life low priority. Um, 